This is going to be a long, nerd out session of planners, so I hope that's what you came for. Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. I've decided that I want to try a planner next year, but I have been bullet journaling for a few years now and I use my Google Calendar a lot. And honestly, I haven't used a planner since my days in college. So when I was researching what planner to get, I was honestly so overwhelmed because I feel like there's so many more planners available nowadays. So I turned to you guys and asked for some suggestions and you guys had some really great ones and it, I found it really helpful. Thank you, by the way. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my favorites and go through or flip through the one that I actually went with. And if you are getting back into planning like me or you are new to it, maybe you will find this helpful. And if you do, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. And let's uh, get right into it. First, I wanna share with you what I am looking for. I think it's really helpful to know what you need out of a planner before you pick one. As I mentioned, I was bullet journaling, so I'm coming from that point of view where I like things kind of tasked out in a to-do list, but I really like minimal designs. I don't really go for the really image heavy planner pages. I think it's fun and it's totally cool if you're into that, but for my brain, I just really need to focus on what I need to do. Maybe sometimes I'll doodle in it, but minimal is what I'm going for. And I did enjoy bullet journaling, but lately my life has become a little more uh, complex and I just don't want to spend the time making grids and uh, having blank pages. I kind of just want something that I can easily jump into and it's all laid out for me, so that's one less thing I need to do. You guys might remember the video that I put up this year. It was for a really simple page of how to put your tasks down, and if you had no time to bullet journal, you can check that out right here, and you can still download it for free. I use that a lot this year, and I really got attached to the time tracker, where you can put the time of the day and then list all your tasks, and I'd like my planner to have some sort of time tracker. I'd like to have some spreads with the months on it, a weekly spread and a daily spread, but I know some of the planners don't have all three of those. And something new I wanna try this year is some fields for like gratitude or reflecting, bring some more well-being to my routine. However, I have seen planners that have way too many of those trackers and fields on their pages, and so I'm really looking for a balance of those among my weekly or daily spreads. Now for the physical things I'm looking for in my book, I definitely want it to lay flat. That's important to me. It needs to have good paper. I tend to like thick paper. I was using the disc bound system. I still love that and I still use it for my workbook. I use the top bound disc bound system. And if you want to learn all about that, I have a whole video on how I organize all my creative projects. I did try that system for bullet journaling and I missed just having a book where my hand wasn't getting in the way of the binding. And I know there are some coil or wire bound books that are less invasive than the disc. This year I'd kind of like to switch it up and try the traditional case bound book. I will miss taking out the pages and switching them around, but I think if it's a planner and it's already laid out for me, I won't miss that as much. With all of that in mind, now let's go through some of my favorites from your suggestions. And unfortunately, I could only find these online for sale and naturally I wanted to buy them all so I could see what they're like in person, but that would just be a lot of planner purchases. So I'm going to go through them this way. By the way, if you are looking for links to any of these planners, I will put all of them in the description below. And if you have tried any of these, I would love to know your experience in the comments. A lot of you suggested the Hobonichi Teko. I think that's how you say it. And I have seen a lot of reviews of it on YouTube. I think it's really minimally laid out and it's beautiful. And even if you don't understand Japanese, you can still use it and it's very functional. However, um, the paper is really thin, so you have to really be okay with that, and unfortunately I'm not, so I'd like to try it, but I just really wish it had thicker paper. But I have heard really good things about it, so don't let my opinion sway you. Big news this year in the YouTuber planner community world, uh, Amanda Rachley came out with her own doodle planner, 
and I think it looks so fun and I would love to have one and to, to see what it's like in person. I love the doodles on the cover. Of course, I love her channel and it does have that bullet journal background. So there's like a mood tracker and a habit tracker that you can fill in. It looks really fun to use, but it doesn't have some of the stuff I'm looking for in my life right now. But I would totally love to just have this book just to have because I'm kind of a book addict. Some of you also suggested Fran Nerd's planner, which I am a big fan of hers. I am a Fran fan, Fran Nerd fan. And I have looked at her planners before. I have considered getting it. She's also a YouTuber and an illustrator, and I really like her studio vlogs and following her illustration and studio journey. And one of them has an area that has like mental well being check ins, which I think is really nice, but it's also like quirky, so it's kind of a fun way to check in. And obviously, I would just love to have this journal, even if I don't end up using it. Some of you suggested ink and vault planners, which I had never heard of. They have really simple, minimalistic planners. It looks like they also have a PDF version of their planner, which is cool if you wanna make your own book. And it's nice that they offer a preview so you can see exactly what the pages look like. It looks like it has an area for goals and a calendar layout. Another suggestion was Mossery, and this was another shop that I had never heard of. And I feel like this one is a little bit different in the way that it looks really geared toward creative minds. You can customize the word on the cover with your name or something else. It gives you the option of a weekly horizontal layout versus a weekly vertical layout, and it has a lot of personal pages. This is a book that I would like to see in person just to get an idea of what it's like flipping through it. They also have an interesting twin book. So it has a hardcover, but you can keep a book on either side. Their covers are interesting because they're refillable. So if you really like the cover you get, you can refill the inside book year after year. Some of you suggested the Clever Fox Planner. After doing some research on Amazon, I found a lot of planners are like animal based on the cover, a panda planner, and there's one with a dog on the cover, and I think there's also like a pelican one. I felt like the Clever Fox one looked a little bit more up my alley. It's a little bit more, I don't know, professional looking maybe. Maybe I subconsciously like the Fox one because it kind of looks like Kona. It does come with stickers and three ribbon bookmarks, a month and year spread, it has goals and a vision board, awareness, gratitude, self-discovery section. I do kind of wish it had some sort of time tracker though. I thought this would be worth mentioning because I was seriously looking into it. On Etsy, there's so many shops that offer their own printable layouts of planner pages. I highly recommend going on Etsy and searching some if you're looking for something specific or custom. One of my favorite shops is Indigo Printables. She has the like kind of minimal modern design that I like. She has a variety of different pages. There's wellness, daily planning. The price seems pretty affordable and there's so many different layouts to choose from. Most of the shops on Etsy make their planning pages in a five, a four, or letter, or half size. I was considering going this route or making my own custom pages and putting them in a Filofax refillable notebook, which I've never tried, and I think it's similar to my past bullet journal where I was using the disc bound system, except I've read that the wire in this notebook is a little bit smaller than that, so it won't be as intrusive to your hand. That's what I liked about it, and it does have that removable page function. However, you do have to buy their punch if you want to make your own custom pages, and I just don't know if I'm ready to adopt a whole new punch hole system because I have so much of the disc bound system. If any of you have tried the Filofax notebook, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. I think the Passion Planner and the Hobonichi were the two most recommended by you guys. The Passion Planner seemed to check a lot of my boxes of things that I wanted. They also have a variety of options on their site. They have a dated, an undated, an academic version, a daily version, and they have accessories. I really liked their time tracker spread. You can also pick which start day you want to your week, a Sunday or a Monday. 
So the Passion Planner is what I ended up getting to try out and it was highly recommended by you guys. I'm totally new to the Passion Planner, but I'm really excited to try it out and I'm going to do a little flip through review for you guys. First, I wanna mention if you're new to this planner, if you go to their website, there's a free downloads section and there you will find free downloads of just about all of the pages. They even provide them in other languages and I thought this was so thoughtful of a company to do this for free. So if you're thinking of trying it out, you can download one of these. They also have inserts where you can print these and cut them out to tape over certain sections of your pages. And if you can't decide which size planner to get, they have a handwriting test sheet, which I highly recommend downloading and printing if you're new to this planner. That's what I did, and it really helped me figure out which size I feel more comfortable writing in. I definitely don't have small handwriting, so the small didn't work for me. The medium was better and the large was just fine too. So in order to keep this a little bit more compact, I went with the medium size. I went with the undated Elite Black version of the Passion Planner and the cover is a leather textured vinyl with their logo embossed on the front. This would be considered a soft cover, but it doesn't feel flimsy, it actually feels like a durable cover. There's one green ribbon, and the elastic band has just the right amount of tension where you can have it over your cover or you can wrap it around the inside of the back cover to hide it. The corners are rounded, and I think because the cover is soft, it actually helps the book lay flat more easily. The binding seems flexible yet durable, and overall, the book just feels really nice to open. Like, it's just a smooth open to put on your desk and plan the day. Inside the back cover, there is a silk or satin expandable pocket. I ordered my planner from Amazon for the free shipping, but I don't know if you get different things if you order directly from Passion Planner. Let me know if you know if it's different, but this one came with a promo card and two stickers. Now let's look at the pages. The first few are an introduction to how you can use this book to break down your goals and turn them into roadmaps and game changers. This will help you organize them in the pages ahead, and there's also areas for reflection. Next spread has a calendar view of the year prior, the current year, and two years ahead. Now we're in the monthly spreads, and I will be filling these in since I got the undated version, but I like this so that I can start whenever I want. It also includes some extra boxes around the month and your monthly personal projects and work projects. And a space to make a mind map of your game changers, which were discussed in the previous pages with the roadmap but you can also put whatever you want here. And after each month, there is a monthly reflection spread. I think I'll find this helpful after each month, and there are six questions and then a little place for a checklist to keep on top of your goals. So this whole portion of the book is dedicated to monthly spreads and the reflection spreads, and then when you reach the last month, there is an end-of-the-year reflection spread. Then the middle portion of the book includes weekly spreads dedicated to every week of the year. And just like the previous spreads, I will be filling these out as well since it's undated. You can break down this week's focus, good things that happened, and every week has a different quote. And I do like that it separates your personal and work to-dos. You can write today's focus above every day, and it also includes that time tracker that I was looking for. Then it includes a space of infinite possibility, which you can guess what goes there, whatever you want. And the last portion of the book includes blank pages and dot grid pages. On the left I have the blank, and on the right hand I have the dot. I think this is good for my brain as well because although I need some structure, I do need some blank space to just freely write and draw whatever I want. And the dot grid is just the right amount of subtle. It's not too bold, but not too light that you can't even see it. For the paper quality, it does say it's sustainably sourced, and it is 120 GSM. And you know I gotta do a pen test, so here are some of my most used pens that I'll be trying out in this planner. 
There was very minimal ghosting, if any, but there was a bleed through from this Staples highlighter. I don't know what's in it that makes it so heavy, but I might be using a different highlighter on these pages. I also wanted to try some tabs on my new planner to make it easier to find the monthly pages. Passion Planner also makes their own accessories and they do make their own monthly tabs, which work across all of the different sizes of planners. They have a variety of colors to choose from and they are like a sticker, so you can just fold it over on the edge of your page. After browsing some planner tab options on Amazon, I came across these faux vinyl ones, which I wanted to see what they were like in person. I've never seen tabs that look like they're made out of leather and I thought maybe they could look a bit professional and they are similar to the cover of the planner. So I'm trying these out. They're also a little bit smaller than the other tabs and they do include a weekly, daily, and freely tab and some extra fun stickers. First impressions, they're definitely thicker than a paper tab since it's made out of vinyl and the adhesive is pretty sticky. I did have to remove some to adjust the placement, but the adhesive is like permanent almost. So just a note, if you use these, the adhesive is very strong. Also, you might want to put them further in than I did because sometimes they will catch on the pages if they're close enough together. I used the weekly and freely tabs to divide the sections in my planner and they are subtle, which I don't mind since it's embossed like the cover. I think they kind of match the vinyl embossed look of the whole planner. Thanks for all your suggestions and joining me in this planner exploration video. And just keep in mind, if you're new to this, get the planner that works best for your life. Everybody has different tastes and everybody has different things they're going through in their life and every year is different. So it's okay to switch up your planner routine. Ultimately, it's totally up to your preference on what makes you the most productive. If you'd like to see how this planner does throughout the year, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a checkup or updated video on it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell right next to it. Even if you have already subscribed, hit that bell so you can sign up for notifications. And if you want to help support more content on this channel, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member. Both of them have perks and you can read more about it in the description below. And I will put a bullet journal planner ideas playlist right here if you wanna check that out. All links will be down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.